So guys, in this video, I'm going to be explaining what I have learned building like a six-figure business. This video is going to be like a bit more like structured, you know, a bit more a uh, presentation form. Got a little slideshow on the computer in a minute. So sit back, relax, get a pen and paper, write notes, and enjoy the rest of the video. What's going on guys? So as I explained before, you know, this video is going to be a bit more informative and that is why we're doing it in presentation form. So this is a recording of my computer screen and uh, I'm just going to go through like a few little tips and things that I've learned on the way to building a six-figure digital marketing agency. And uh, like the agency I'm referring to is Brand Panier. Uh, that is my social media marketing agency. And with six figures, I mean that it's doing more than $100,000 in profit uh, which means it's doing over eight thousand three hundred dollars uh profit a month and that's why it's called a six-figure agency uh, it's been like a goal of mine for a while to build a six-figure agency um you know when i just started out it was like um like the first goal obviously was to be uh, be able to quit my job and then as soon as i was able to do that you know my goal it, it completely uh i think immediately expanded to okay i now want a six-figure business and obviously you know going forward for like the next year i've got uh, bigger goals uh, again and again but anyway uh, just to start off you know the, the first like uh, major milestone for me was obviously um, achieving like six-figure business status and i just want to show you guys a few things that i've learned on the way or a few little tips and tricks and um, just like my experience basically of like what, what's happening or what's been happening uh, these last few months so first like major thing that i've had to learn uh building the, the six-figure business is that i needed to stop trading my time for money and um, basically what i mean by that is uh people get paid hourly like tr in the traditional sense you get paid per hour so for example you get ten dollars an hour you know um you're working an hour for ten dollars and you know, there's, there's no way out of that. Like, if you want to earn more money, you need to work more hours. Like, for example, I used to work in the gym as a fitness instructor, and I got uh, 10 euros an hour. That, that's even before tax. Like, after tax, it was much less. Um, in 10 euros an hour, and if I wanted to earn more money per month, I'd have to work more hours. And there was no way around that. There was no way of me getting, like, a commission or anything like that. It, that was it. That was, like, the set... Um, uh, parameters i had to work with and you know the same goes for people that work nine to five you know there's no way to earn more money within those eight hours that you work a day and more often than not you know like people do say uh you know you work nine to five uh your main job and then from six to nine you've got you know your side hustle your project that you work on and stuff like that but more often than not uh, the nine to five just sucks out all of your energy you know you're commuting to work you're working eight hours you know you're in this in this rut you know you, you've got all this stress from working the nine to five it's eight hours long non-stop you know you, like people aren't as productive anymore within those eight hours i'm going a bit off topic here but you know the nine to five stem from like when people still work in factories and stuff like that you know you used to get in nine in the morning used to work your ass off till five but because it was manual labor you know it was possible to do whereas nowadays it's all with computers you know it's 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 what you uh, you work with your brain more than with your you know with, with, with your hands and that's why nine to five now is is a bit outdated really because we can't focus behind the computer screen for eight hours so that just sucks out all of the energy like i used to work at, uh, in an office job as well and when i used to work there like i was never productive for eight hours non-stop i used to work for a few hours uh, in the morning then like around like lunchtime, I'll just like mess about me, like just you know, I'll browse the internet, just waiting for like the, the productivity to come back. And then like from three till five I used to work quite productive as well. But you know, that just goes to show that uh, the eight hours that you do work, you you know, you're not as productive as you should be. And at the end of the day, it does suck out all your energy working nine to five. So you need to also figure out for yourself like is your financial vehicle congruent with your goals? You know, if you are working nine to five, is that going to make you, um, you know, is that going to get you to reach success? You know, if your goal is uh, to get six figures, for example, are you going to get it with a nine to five job? And the answer is no, because there will always be a cap on what you can earn. Like I said before, you know, if uh, I earn 10 euros an hour, so if you earn $10 an hour or £10 an hour and you work 40 hours a week for a month, 
you are never going to uh, earn $8.3 thousand uh, a month, which you need for six six figures. Um, or let's say, for example, something lower, like you're never going to earn 6000 a month because, you know, you'll always be stuck at 40 hours a week, $10 an hour for a month. You'll always be stuck at 1600 uh, a month. So if you earn $10 an hour and, like, for example, you did nothing else but, uh, you know, sleep for six hours uh, out of the 24, so you'll be working 18 hours a day for an entire month, You'll still, you know, you'll literally work for 550 hours a month and you'll be earning $5,500, which is still less than the $6,000 I just mentioned before and you've worked your ass off, you know, you're bleeding through your eyes, you've got no energy anymore because literally all your time is spent working and, you know, you're nowhere near the $8,300 a month that you need to earn six figures. So you need to start protecting your time and value it, valuing it more than, like, money. Your time is precious. I've, I've said this so often. You know, you need to start getting paid for the value you provide rather than the time you put in. Time is valuable. You know, money comes and goes, but your time, like once you spend your time, you can never get it back. You know what I mean? There's no way to get your time back, whereas, you know, money does come and go. Next thing I learned is that you do need a scalable financial vehicle, and this ties in nicely with what I explained before. You know, if you work at a nine to five desk job, you know, you will never be able to earn more money because you are trading your time for money. So, um, you need to find a vehicle that is, you know, that it is possible to scale. So, uh, also quick life hack, you know, if you do work uh, for someone else, you know, you're not your own boss and you're in sales and you get offered to work with commission, which I know a lot of people in sales or any type of uh, sales job do. You know, they can pick between either um, a fixed rate or they can work on commission. Always go for commission, one hundred percent do that because that makes your income scalable again. So, if you, like, for example, you. Um, you, you know, you're in the, the, the car industry, uh, you're, you're in car dealership, you sell cars, and you get 1% of every car you sell, you know, for example, much, might be much more, much less, I'm not really sure, um, and you say you sell a car for 100,000, you know, that is $1,000 or euros or pounds commission, so say you sell eight cars a month, which is what, that's two cars a week, you'll have eight grand, which is, you know, just under 100,000 a month, a uh, thousand a year, sorry, which means, you know, if you keep that up for 10 years, you'll be a millionaire. You know, that's how easy it can be because you're not working, where you're not trading your time for money, you know, there's no cap on it. The more cars you sell, the more commission you get. And, you know, there's a big chance of you earning more than you would if you just work nine to five, uh, just work hourly. Another example is um, like realtors in the US uh, get 1%, uh, 2% commission per house that they sell. So if they sell a house for $1 million, they get twenty thousand dollars commission. Like you literally only have to sell two hour, two houses a year, and you can live comfortably. So if you sell like one house within like the first day, of the first month of a year, you can literally just go on vacation and you know chill and do all, all whatever you want for six months, and then all you need to do is sell one more house, and then you can do that for the rest of the year. Obviously, you know you got you got, you have to be more ambitious than that. And if you really do want to uh, hit six figures, if you really do want to you know, like become a millionaire and stuff like that, then you need to be uh, ambitious, you need to work hard and not like take the time off. But, you know, just an example, just to make you understand that working with commission, if you're in sales, can be profitable. If, you know, if you do not want to choose the route of, I want to be my own boss or I want my own business, stuff like that. Anyway, back on topic of, you know, financial vehicles, uh, without a cap means that you, the model that you're using, it needs to be scalable and not limited to your time. For example, my social media marketing agency, um, you know, Basically, we take on clients, we do their Facebook ads for them, we get leads for them, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter to us if we have uh, five clients, 10 clients, 15 clients, you know, we basically, if we get more clients, we just take on more, uh, more people in our team, you know, we scale the team to make sure that we do manage all those clients. Same goes for... Um, you know, say we lose a few clients, then we just tell a few team members that, you know, we will not be needing their services. And this makes it scalable for us because we're not trading our time, we're not doing it all ourselves. Obviously, at the start, I did do it all myself. But um, now, you know, now that I've got a team, basically our team, like, expands and contracts with the amount of clients that we've got. So that makes it scalable. And the more clients we do get, as I mentioned before, you know, the, the more the team will expand and the more people we will take on. Another major thing that I learned, like in this whole uh, like experience, is that self education will be the like the key factor in you getting to six figures or you getting to become a millionaire or anything like that. 
Um, you know, formal education will not get where you want to go. And I'm speaking from experience. You know, I know a lot of people are um, dropouts or uni dropouts, high school dropouts, whatever, and they'll say that formal education will, you know, wouldn't have g- give them the the right uh, information or the right path or anything like that. And that's all fine. You know, everyone's entitled to the opinion, but I have actually done a formal education. You know, I've got a business degree in uni myself and um, no, I'm not going to bash it. I did have the best time. I learned the foundation. I improved my communication skills, got to know a lot of cool people, stuff like that, you know, network. Uh, people I still speak to to this day and, um, you know, it was all good, but other than the foundation, other than now knowing uh, like a few little business models and a few little tips and tricks, the, the main things that I needed to learn, like the high income skills that I needed to learn to build up this agency, you know, I did not get through formal education. In fact, um, basically the formal education, by the time, say for example, something new comes on the market, by the time it gets into the, the school books and school curriculum, it'll be too late. It's like five, six, seven years before it actually gets accepted into the school curriculum, you know, it gets printed in books and stuff like that. And um, our uni actually realised that. And in the last year of our uni, they said, listen, um, the curriculum that you're getting for this year is actually outdated. So instead of learning from books, uh, we're actually going to, we've got like a sort of freestyle last semester of the year. And, you know, you can pick uh, out of four topics and, you know, you can just basically just learn and study like more actual topics, more relevant topics that are relevant now. Like, for example, social media marketing, uh, what else does you have like your big data the internet of things stuff like that you could actually and like that was the most educational informational semester out of my entire uh, degree was that last semester that they let us actually learn ourselves and pick a topic that we wanted to learn more about that was relevant and you know uh, up to date and learn that rather than uh, read some old books that are like seven eight years old so anyway back on topic uh, there's a few things that you need to know about formal education uh, basically formal education you know it's about it's about passing tests and it's it definitely it's, it's going to get you a good job definitely you know if you, if you finish a degree if you've got a business degree or whatever you know you will get a really good job uh you, you know it'll be good on your cv you'll have a good cv but it's not going to make you extremely rich or give you the freedom because it's not created for that it is literally created to get you ready for like the, the job market and to get you a good job whereas you know self-education it's about learning with a single goal of using it, applying it, and you automatically dismiss rubbish that is not useful to you. So, for example, you know, if I buy a course, I'll go through all the stuff that I want to learn. I'll go through all the stuff that I want to know. And if there's a, the, if there's a topic or there's a, a module that I already understand or that I don't find interesting, I'll skip it. Whereas with formal education, if there was if there were subjects that I did not necessarily like or find useful or know that I would do nothing with it. I still have to learn it because I still have to pass that test and still get that piece of paper at the end of it. And like I said, you know, it's all about uh, formal education. It's all about passing tests. You're, you're learning to pass a test and you will find the value of years of school boiling down to one single piece of paper. And uh, like, for example, when I passed my, you know, when I got my uni degree and people said like, you know, did you really find your business degree useful? I said, like, you know, there's a few things I've learned, but other than that, you know, um, what I learned, like, the most the most of what I learned in those last four years is what I've done myself, you know, after school or, you know, stuff like that. And a lot of the time, people said, oh, at least you've got that piece of paper. You know, that piece of paper is proof that you've done it. Like, it all literally boils down to that piece of paper, and, you know, it doesn't really matter if you've actually developed or improved yourself within those four years. So in my opinion, you know, self-education is the best thing I've ever done and the best thing I will ever continue to do. You know, you can literally buy success nowadays. Like, uh, for example, a course, you know, pe- people complain that it's, it's what is it, $997 or whatever, $1,000. But, you know, do you know how much money that person has spent? You know, going through the errors, the trials, the tribulations, how much time they've spent on, like, getting the information, getting the experience to put in that course. They've taken all their knowledge and information thousands of dollars they've spent and it's all in one course that you can get for a one-time payment you know i just uh, it's it's funny sometimes you know people will spend a thousand like they won't spend a thousand dollars on a course but they will get the new iphone xs or the new apple watch you know or whatever i mean you know if you buy a course for a thousand dollars it's obvious that you're going to make that money back if you put like if you put your mind to it and apply the knowledge, you know, you can get a return investment immediately. Same goes for books. You know, I've got people. People tell me like, like, people will spend. 
I'm going on a bit of a rant here, but like people will spend a hundred on a night out, but they won't buy a twenty euro or twenty dollar book. No, they they will um, they'll go for you know trips to holidays to Ibiza, whatever festivals and all stuff like that. And then when they're in the airport, they will not pick up that 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 book for ten twenty euros. You know, same goes for my um, my my playbook, my ebook uh, on like living life on your own terms. And basically, it has got all the uh, information that you need. Um, you know, to build a foundation to to actually pick a financial vehicle, uh, whether that's social media marketing, personal branding, whatever. Like I all explain it all in that ebook. It's thirty five dollars, which is thirty euros. And uh, someone actually sent me a DM the other day saying, um, "I bought the ebook and loved it. You know, I've I've got all the information I need now to do uh, this and this financial vehicle." And my brother at the same time actually bought an iPhone cover for the same price. And he, I know, he said laughingly, "You know, who do you think made the better investment?" And the guy who actually bought the book actually made his money back immediately because he started doing uh, Amazon FBA and you know got his money back. Whereas the, his brother he bought the phone cover and that's it you know the phone cover eventually will break and other than that you know that's it whereas if you buy the playbook you know you've got that information forever it will not break it will not go old you know it's evergreen information it's about living life on your own terms and it's it's all about the mindset of how to actually achieve that and all the stuff that i've gathered over the years in terms of information it's all in that book and there's, there's still people out there that will not pay 35 dollars for you know a one-time payment to have that information forever Anyway, bit of a rant, sorry about that. I just needed to get that off my chest. And next thing is that you do need a team. And I've spoken about this before, you know, when talking about the scalability. Uh, once I had a team, you know, that really helped me with the workload, things just changed for the better. So uh, here you can see, like, my uh, social media marketing business model um, consists of four pillars. Um, it's obviously, you know, it's a bit more... Um, bit more in depth than this but you know just just make it simple you know keep it simple stupid uh client outreach was the first thing i had to do so i had to actually get clients uh interested you know to find find leads for my agency second thing i need to do is get them on a, a call or go to a meeting with them you know try and sell my service to them from their project management so i needed to actually make sure that everything they wanted from me got done you know make sure that the client's happy make sure that i'm doing everything that i need to be doing and obviously, you know, the last thing is development that is actually getting the stuff done. And all these four pillars I used to do myself and I used to spend so much time, you know, getting the clients, searching on websites, trying to create like lead generation uh, magnets and stuff like that. Then once I actually got the client, I used to spend hours and hours, you know, traveling to go to meetings, uh, get them on Skype, you know, sales calls, stuff like that, trying to get them to to become my client. From there, I you know, spent hours and hours creating graphics, setting up the ad campaigns for them, making sure the client's happy, you know, doing all the work. And it wasn't until I actually got a team that life got so much easier because basically everything you do, there's someone out there that can do it as well. There's someone out there that is willing to do the work as well. So, for example, you know, it, that doesn't mean that you need to give all your money away because there's people out there that will do it for a lesser price than, you know, your... Uh, telling the, the client to pay you then you're asking for the client so say for example your retainer is a thousand a month you know there is people that will do that job uh, like the, the ad job for example for 200 a month and then there's also people out there that will do all the graphics for 50 a month you know you need to get yourself a team together obviously you know this will dip into your, your profit but this will make it more scalable because again you're not trading your time for money you know you're getting a team together and you know, the more clients you get, the more people you get on board, the more you build your team out, and that is how you scale the business. So, like, 100%, once I got a team together, life got so much easier. I wasn't stressed out anymore because I knew there's also people working on my behalf. Speaking of people, uh, I do think you do need to surround yourself with the right people. You know, you know, you know what they say, like, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And this has probably been, like, one of the most important things. I, I know I've said that a few times before uh, during this presentation, but this is like one of the most important things I've learned building a six-figure business is surrounding myself with the right people that have got the right mentality because by surrounding yourself with uh, people that are on the same journey as, as me, I've learned so much because you know everyone's got golden nuggets and life hacks to share and you, know, you can literally just learn from each other. You know you know the saying, uh, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with and I, I believe this is so true and by constantly connecting with people within like this little bubble that you know we, we live and engage in you know the social media marketing bubble I've learned so much and I do owe it to the people that I speak to on a regular basis for getting this far 
and that is actually also the reason why I started the the AM club. Uh, for those of you that want to achieve their goals, but you know you haven't really got like a network or a club of people that are uh, like minded to surround you, you know yourself with. Uh, I've created this club and in this group we actually set goals for ourselves for the coming month, uh, for the month of October and obviously you know, November, December we'll do something similar as well but for the month of October we've set uh, goals for each other, uh, for ourselves and we're all going to keep each other accountable and uh, I, I love it, you know it's a little small group, 55 members at the point of recording this uh, and we all keep each other accountable, you know um, there's people that have set goals for getting up early and those people, uh, you know, immediately when they get up you know, they'll send the photo of like the morning coffee and the time of like 6 30 5 30 whatever you know the atmosphere is good and um, you know we all share knowledge and the best part of it all is that it, this is free for you guys so if you want to become part of the am club um i'll link it below so click the link below and you know you can join for free and lastly before we wrap it all up you do need to visualize success and now for some people this will be a bit airy fairy but um, as soon as i read the, the book think and grow rich i really did understand the importance of visualizing success you know um you need to focus on what you want to achieve and a lot of people that are, are in the mindset that they, they focus on what they don't want and uh, like they, they don't want to uh, they don't want to be fat anymore they don't want to gain weight or they don't want to be broke or you know whatever but you need to start focusing on what you do want because if you think it you know you slowly become it if like there's a there was a, a research done on uh, basketball, uh, basketball players and it was about doing, I think it was the dunk. So he had three groups, one person constantly, or one group constantly practiced, you know, to doing the dunk with basketball. Uh, the second group was constantly visualizing how to do it, you know, visualizing them uh, doing the dunk with basketball and then the third group done absolutely nothing. And when the test came back, the, the group that, uh, obviously the group that practiced, you know, got the best score, but the group that visualized doing it without doing a single dunk, they actually came quite close to the group who practice it constantly. And, you know, that just goes to show that visualizing success is so important. Visualizing your goals, visualizing what you want to do is so important rather than, you know, think about what you don't want to do or don't want to achieve. For example, you know, if I tell you don't think of a pink elephant, do not think of a pink, do not visualize a pink elephant in front of you now. You know, what did you do? You thought of a pink elephant, didn't you? You know, you could see a pink elephant in front of you. It's because it's so difficult to not think about things and that is why we need to focus on, you know, what we do want to achieve rather than what we what we don't want to do. There you go, like, don't think of a pink elephant. Uh, you know, same goes for, for anything you want in life. Instead of focusing on, like, quitting smoking, focus on living healthier. Instead of focusing on, like, um, eliminating junk food, focus on eating more greens. Instead of focusing on like all the reasons why you will not get success, focus on the reason why you will make it. And you know, like Paulo Coelho explains in the book, uh, The Alchemist, if you really want something, like the whole universe conspires to make that happen. You know, to, in helping you achieve that. And I really do believe that to be true. So, guys, anyway, uh, that is all I got for today. Hope you got a bit more like of an insight to like my vision and my path and leading. Up to me building this agency and uh, comment more life if you made it this far into the video. If you want to see more content like this, then make sure you subscribe for more. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. Gotta do what I gotta do.